when you flip that switch and your phone start charging that's not magic it's power conversion at work if you open up any electronic device you will find a power supply module that converts 220 volt 50 hertz ac into a lower dc voltage like 12.5 volts or 5 volts but how does this actually happen while components like diodes capacitors and transformers all play a role the real star of this show is the fully controlled semiconductor switch mosfet these three terminal devices come in various shapes and sizes unlike vjts where the emitter base and the collector terminals can vary mosfets have a consistent pin layout the gate drain and source are always in same positions across all through hole packages at first glance turning on a mosfet seems simple just apply a gate voltage higher than the threshold but that's not the whole story there are intrinsic capacitances between the mosfet terminals charging and discharging during the on off event and hence defining the switching behavior of the device these values are usually listed in the data sheet as cass coss and crss this figure shows a practical mosfet along with its internal capacitances when used as a low side switch let's see how these capacitors behave during the turn on transient and how the mosfet finally turns on initially the bottom switch is closed at this point the gate source capacitance cgs is completely discharged to 0 volts meanwhile coss which is a parallel combination of cds and cgd is charged to the supply voltage vdd now at a time t equals t1 the bottom switch opens and the top switch closes this applies v drive to the gate starting the charging process of cgs during this time the current flowing through the cds and cgd also known as the miller capacitance is very small so we can ignore it for now as cgs charges vgs begins to rise once vgs reaches the threshold voltage the mosfet starts to conduct slightly not fully on yet but just above the leakage even though the current is still small it's enough to begin the increase in drain current id at this point the vds is still at 24 volts meaning the mosfet is partially conducting this is where the switching loss occur because both voltage and current are present in the device simultaneously as the drive current continues to raise the vgs beyond the threshold it reaches a plateau this is where the vgs stays almost constant for a bit and this flat region is where the miller effect kicks in the cgd also known as a miller capacitance become important here it's not a fixed capacitance like cgs or cds so it start influencing the behavior as the vds begins to fall the dry current start charging the miller capacitance however because vds is decreasing at a certain dv by dt the voltage at the drain node drops which causes charge redistribution in the miller capacitor that's why the vgs curve appear relatively flat meanwhile coss primarily cds is discharging through the mosfet channel eventually the dry current resumes charging the cgs fully and the vgs rises to the full v drive level and there you have it the mosfet is fully switched on and ready for action there is just one more point to note the polarity across the miller capacitor cgd actually reverses before and after turn on now that we understand how a mosfet turns on let's build a simple circuit to use it for switching a dc motor for this example i will be using a 12 volt rs775 dc motor as a high side load this motor is rated for 12 volts and draws around 5.25 amps at full load so the mosfet we choose needs to handle that power comfortably now if we check the winding resistance it's around 1.2 ohms that means at startup when the rotor is not moving and there is no back emf the motor can briefly pull up to 10 amps this is both the starting and stall current to ensure reliability i usually apply a safety factor of 1.64 current and around 2 to 3 4 voltage so we are looking for a mosfet rated at least 24 volts 16 amps that gives us a solid starting point for this application i have selected the widely used irf is 44n and n channel mosfet according to the data sheet it can handle up to 49 amps and has a drain source breakdown voltage of 55 volts with an on state resistance of just 17.5 milli ohms but don't be misled by those numbers these are real values measured at 25 degrees c in controlled lab conditions in real world factors like ambient temperature thermal resistance and junction temperature all come into play for consumer electronics i typically assume a maximum ambient temperature of 50 degrees c so let's see how the irf is at 44n perform under those conditions referring to the drain current derating graph the allowable current drops slightly at 50 degrees c down to around 44.8 amps 
that still well above what our motor draws even at startup now let's look at rds on based on the normalized on resistance versus temperature graph rds on increases by about 1.1 times at 50 degrees celsius bringing the effective resistance to around 19.25 milli ohms using this value we can estimate the conduction loss which comes out to be approximately 1.925 watts this power loss generates heat which raises the junction temperature of the device using the mosfets thermal resistance from junction to ambient we estimate a temperature rise of around 119 degrees celsius while ignoring gate drive losses so with an ambient temperature of 50 degrees celsius and neglecting any self heating from pcb or surrounding components the junction temperature reaches approximately 169 degrees celsius still below the maximum rating that means we are thermally safe in conclusion the ir of fisher 44n is a solid choice for switching a 12 volt dc motor in this setup both electrically and thermally now let's build the circuit together first i added a 10 kilo pull down resistor to discharge the gate source capacitance cgs and prevent false turn on next i soldered two wires to the rf775 dc motor one connected to the mosfet's drain and other to the positive rail to protect the mosfet from voltage spikes during switching i placed a freewheeling diode across the motor to prevent avalanche breakdown all the connections follow the simple circuit diagram by applying voltage to the gate we can switch the mosfet on and off with ease notice that when the gate is driven the mosfet turns on and the drain to source voltage falls to about 157 millivolt in this setup now that we have used the mosfet as a basic switch let's take it a step further and see how we can control the speed of a dc motor using pwm technique let's pick a pwm frequency of 10 kilohertz you might think just connect the pwm output from the microcontroller directly to the mosfet gate but that's a bad idea here is why firstly microcontrollers can typically source only around 40 milliamps at 5 volt that's not good enough to charge and discharge the mosfet's gate capacitance quickly slow adjust means higher switching losses secondly there's a thermal stability issue if you look at the drain current versus gate source voltage graph at two temperatures there's a point where the drain current is insensitive to temperature changes this is called the zero temperature coefficient point and for ir officer 44n it's around 5.5 volt higher than what our microcontroller can provide below that the mosfet's drain current increases with the temperature which can lead to thermal runaway to avoid that we need to drive the gate well above this point i choose 12 volts since it's a common easily available voltage that provides fast reliable switching and stays well below the mosfet's vgs max to drive the gate properly i built a simple power stage using a bc547 npn transistor and a 33 ohm resistor this asymmetric drive pulls the gate down quickly when turning off while still delivering a strong clean drive when turning on since we are switching at 10 kilohertz there will be some power loss during transitions so let's calculate the switching losses and see what kind of impact they actually have we can estimate the mosfet's rise time using the total gate charge which is obtained by integrating the vgs curve during turn on in this design with a 33 ohm resistor the peak drive current can reach up to 360 milliamps using the total gate charge of 63 nanocoulomb the rise time is approximately 173 nanoseconds this calculation gives us a good estimate of how quickly the mosfet switches on even though this is an asymmetric drive i am assuming the fault time equals the rise time as a worst case scenario that means the total switching transition time is about 347 nanoseconds so plugging these values into the formula the switching loss comes out to around 109 milliwatts and the conduction loss is about 531 milliwatts giving a total power loss of approximately 640 milliwatts This result in a junction temperature of around 90 degrees Celsius. I used the digital pin 9 of the Arduino Uno as a PWM output. To control the speed, I connected a 10 kilo ohm potentiometer to analog pin A0, feeding in a variable voltage. Finally, I uploaded this simple sketch, and there we go. I can now control the motor speed smoothly using this potentiometer. Here is the wiring diagram. All connections are made accordingly. There are many deeper topics like transient thermal impedance, safe operating area and UIS operation that I didn't cover here because they were not critical for this project. But don't worry, those will be explored in a separate video. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe for more hardware deep dives and upcoming content. Bye for now. See you later with a new video.